Janiv Schechtman is Head of Product Management Threat Prevention at Checkpoint. A warm welcome to IDG Security Today, Janiv. Hi, Katrina. Thank you. Thank you, IDG, for hosting me. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I hope you have your coffee ready with you. I have mine. So mm -hmm. let's get started. Yes, please go ahead. All right. So uh, at Checkpoint, uh, my role and my team's role is to add new security capabilities to help prevent the next zero-day threat, threats that haven't been seen before. And in the coming 20 to 25 minutes, uh, we'll talk about sophisticated attacks, as Katrina mentioned, and how we can block them using the power of AI. We'll start with the threat landscape in 2020 and 2021. As, as you can see, it has been uh, these has been two busy years for both the cyber criminals and the cybersecurity defenders. Uh, all of the attacks that you can see are over the timeline performed by other private attackers or by nation states, coming from different attack vectors such as ransomware, APT and phishing, software vulnerabilities, supply chains. And in the first part of my presentation, what I will do is give you examples focusing on the tactics of the attackers for each one of these attack vectors. And in the second part, per tactic, or sorry, per vector, what I will do is show you how you can, how security product can prevent them uh, by using the power of AI. We'll start with ransomware, and I'm sure that you've all heard uh, the term, or you're all familiar with the term of ransomware, and you all heard about the latest attacks of the Colonial Pipeline and the largest uh, meat supplier in the US, uh, ransomware is, no, is a known uh, issue and a known vector. However, if you focus on the tactics, and, and, and that's what I uh, wanted to show in this slide, if you focus on the evolution of the tactic itself, you can see that there was a growth and that there was a progress from the attacker's side. Uh, starting from 2013, the crypto locker uh, ransomware, which simply uh, locked uh, the device of, of a user asking for ransomware, uh, ransom payment using Bitcoin. Bitcoin was not that expensive at that time. So it was easy to unlock the device. Uh, we moved to 2017 to more global attacks such as WannaCry and the first uh, nation state attack called NotPetya, which is not really ransomware, right? It was more of a wiper. You couldn't really recover the data. But what uh, unique in these attacks that the data, whether decrypted or encrypted, whether locked or unlocked, uh, has been kept on the premises of the customer, of the organization. What we see in 2019 is an evolution of the ransomware tactic what we call the double extortion. Why? Because the attackers not only uh, keep or lock the data on the premises, they also exfiltrate it, exfiltrate it to their own infrastructure and ask for ransomware payments from the organization itself. So it's not only a question of how do I recover my data, but also how do I prevent the attackers from publishing it. And then in last two years, what we see is another evolution of triple extortion. Attackers would like to maximize uh, their uh, revenues, right? Because uh, because uh, it requires a lot of effort today to uh, compromise or hack into the environment. And they're not only accessing or contacting the organization, but also the organization's suppliers and partners, and potentially even employees asking from them to pay in order not to publish the, uh, uh, the information that they have. The tactic here that I would like to talk next uh, with uh, uh, of how it is related to an AI-based solutions is more about how do we prevent the lateral movement and the data exfiltration and the commu communication itself with the uh, infrastructure of the attackers? Another anecdote not related to, uh, to ransomware tactics is about payments. I thought it just would be interesting to mention here. If the average uh, payment in uh, 2013 for an analog device was $300, uh, we saw an increased payments, uh, record payments uh, by a single organization. 2020, there was a record of 20 million dollars paid by a single organization. And just recently, we learned about an, a one organization in the US which paid $40 million in order uh, to prevent the attackers from publishing their private information. So lots of money in there, and, and the challenge is only growing from the cybersecurity solutions. Moving next to phishing. So uh, as the title says, it's not only phishing, it's phishing, phishing, and some more phishing. And why I say it? Because Users click on everything. And if you ask CISOs today, what is on their agenda in terms of cybersecurity solution? I assume that most of them will say phishing. Even if you send an email or, or provide a web page to a user saying, this is a malware, do not click. I assume that some of them will click it. And, and there is a need to prevent 
the attackers from uh, gaining this first uh, phase of the attack, from gaining persistence by uh, um, using phishing as the first method of the attack. And what I did here is just provide you a simple example from Checkpoint Threat Intelligence Cloud called Threat Cloud from, uh, from last quarter. Uh, the pages that you see here are innocent LinkedIn pages, or at least look like an innocent LinkedIn pages. Uh, one of them asks the user to accept an order. Another one is a canonical uh, URL, which you see a preview of the URL, but they do not match. As you can see in the example, one of them, you know, the, uh, the link says, or the logo says LinkedIn, but the detail itself redirects the user to elsewhere, but not all of the users can really identify it as something which is uh, not legit. And then it redirects the user to a web page. And from the web page, when he types in his uh, uh, user credentials, the attacker use it to steal uh, to steal the information. And we just learned from the latest uh, ransomware attack on the uh, largest meat supp supplier that it was probably initiated or started from a stolen credential of a VPN account that was not protected by two-factor authentication. That's how it starts. From phishing, uh, users usually use their private credentials for business purposes and vice versa. And there is a need to stop that. And I'll show you uh, in the second part how we can do that using AI-based solution. Next, supply chain attacks. And, and supply chain is something which is not new. We saw that in, uh, in Stuxnet and we saw, saw it with uh, a Target uh, in, uh, back in uh, the 2000s and, and I think 12. And, and, and um, uh, CC Cleaner was a supply chain attack. And last year we saw two cases of a highly profiled uh, supply chain attack. But I think the main question around supply chain is, is as I wrote here in the slide, is how do you trust what you're getting from a software vendor? If you go and audit a large enterprise environment for third-party libraries that they are using in their software code, I'm sure that you find hundreds, if not thousands, of so software libraries and products that you need to audit and review and mark them as trust or untrust. How do you, how do, you do it? Uh, is it really possible to do that? And, and if you look on the two examples from, from the last year, one of them from previous year, SoloWinds, I'm sure everyone heard about it, um, that affected 18,000 customers worldwide. And CodeCov, which is the one that recently occurred in, in the first quarter of 2021, affected 20,000 customers worldwide. And just to show you how simple that is, it is sophisticated, very sophisticated for the attackers to go and, and compromise a, a supplier environment. But eventually what they do in, in SolarWinds, they only replace a few code lines. And in CodeCov, the only thing that they did is change an IP address from the, uh, from the vendor source code. So again, uh, a small change, a, a huge impact on your environment, on, on the environment that you use. And you can only, we can already see that from a, a Japanese e-commerce company called Mercury that because of code code attack, 27,000 customer records have been exposed uh, uh, from their environment. So huge impact on privacy. And, and again, I will show you uh, what we can do using AI. And the reason I'm showing uh, the second slide, which is a bit technical, okay? Don't be scared, it's okay. Uh, what, I'm, what I show here is taking from Microsoft is the attack phases of SoloWinds. And the only purpose I show it is because of the red parts, the one that actually communicates back with the attacker infrastructure. So if you look on the first stage where the attacker gain or the attacker compromise the supply chain, maybe there's not much to do, to do there, but in the second stage, third and fourth stage, when the attacker gets um, uh, or uh, is able to load something to the environment and trying to get persistence and to move laterally, and of course report back to his infrastructure and get further inputs, further commands on what to do next, this is where we can catch it, catch the traffic or catch the behavior and terminate it using AI-based solutions. Another example is a, is a software vulnerabilities, zero-day software vulnerabilities. And the most known one in, in 2021 was the Exchange Server vulnerability for a Microsoft Exchange servers. And, and what I brought here over timeline is just the, uh, uh, the chain of events that eventually uh, brought the attackers or brought uh, an attacker to initiate a ransomware attack on, uh, based on, uh, on that vulnerability. It all started in January where the, uh, a research uh, a team from China discreetly reported to Microsoft about that vulnerability. 
A day afterwards, it has been exploited already by a hacking uh, team called Hafnium, right? So much for sense of, sense of urgency, one day. And then in March, uh, Microsoft released an urgent patch for, uh, for the Microsoft Exchange. Of course, uh, it, here at Checkpoint, and I'm sure with other vendors, uh, these were, uh, all the protections has been uh, put in place. We updated all of our products with, uh, to uh, secure these vulnerabilities, but not all of the organization followed that. So in March 5th, and then you can see in March 26th, uh, there was a ransomware attack based on that, on these vulnerabilities. And, and according to our Checkpoint research team, most of them uh, were affected in the United States. So again, uh, zero day vulnerability, not easy to find, not easy to prevent, but what we can further do in order to block that attack. And the next slide, again, a bit technical, don't be afraid. Uh, the only purpose I show it here is to uh, show you the uh, infection chain and what happens at the end of that infection chain. Okay, so attackers are exploiting that vulnerability regardless to the tactics themselves. But the end result is that the end user that the attacker has an hand, hands on um, um, persistence on the environment and he can do his follow up activities uh, to move laterally or to exfiltrate the data. And how, do, how can we prevent that? using AI-based solutions. Last but not least, is not related to uh, the actual uh, vector tactics. It is more related to the security admins because there are many solutions out there today, many vendors who provide their own uh, cybersecurity solution who claim they, they have the best solutions uh, um, in the industry. And CISOs probably would like to have their security stack equipped with more than one vendor and not to trust one vendor. Uh, and, and eventually it looks like that. Right? These are the, all the solutions that you can uh, select today to secure your network, your cloud, uh, the access of your users to the corporate assets. And if you use more than one, uh, one product for the security admin, it is a very complex task. How can you monitor or correlate events that are coming from these products, not necessarily from the same vendors? And what we can do here in, in terms of administration in order to make his professional life easier? I show it to you, very interesting solution. And that summarized the first uh, part of my uh, presentation. Uh, I showed you how we can, uh, uh, examples for attack vectors such as ransomware, uh, software vulnerabilities, supply chain, even administration. And the second part will give you example per tactic, how security solution can prevent these attacks using the power of AI. First one, uh, is a deep learning framework. And to explain what is a deep learning framework, let's go backwards to uh, an AI algorithm uh, called uh, uh, machine learning. Machine learning or the classic machine learning is a subfamily of an AI algorithm. Deep learning is a subfamily of machine learning and the most advanced one. What is the difference between classic machine learning and deep learning? This slide explains it. So the top line, and I'll show you later the, second, the uh, bottom line, the top line shows a flow of a classic machine learning uh, algorithm training and result. How can, you, how can you use classic machine learning in order to identify that the image uh, that is being processed is marked? What is needed is a domain expert. And as you can see, the domain expert itself extracts features or define features. It looks on the image and tells the algorithm to look on the distance between the eyes or the width of the nose. But what if he forgot to define the, um, let's say, the distance uh, of his pupils? It means that he lost information and the algorithm will not be accurate. Deep learning is more advanced algorithm because it processed all of the data. It processed all of the pixels of the image of Mark. Those the result is higher or is more accurate. And same goes for cybersecurity and files. If you look on an, a malicious executable file, let's say a ransomware file that has been dropped by, uh, by a dropper. Um, and, and if you use a machine learning algorithm, it means that the admin or the security domain expert needed to define all of the features of that specific executable file, specific ransomware. For example, who certified it, who signed the file? What is the operating system that the file needs to work on? And so on and so forth. If he misses one of the features, it means the detection is less accurate. With deep learning, you process all of the bytes of the files, the raw bytes, meaning the results is more accurate. 
And what we had uh, in 2018 in our threat intelligence cloud called Threat Cloud is we introduced a machine learning algorithm to in order to identify malicious executables. But over, over time, you need to find a way to uh, uh, catch up with the involvement of the threat landscape. And last year, we introduced or we added our environment, a deep learning framework model, and those results clearly shows 30% improvement in our detection rate and 90% reduction in false positive, which in some cases are as, as important as being accurate, meaning the admin doesn't want to see false positive events, deep learning helps them to, uh, to eliminate 90% of these events. Another use for an AI-based uh, solution with phishing, remember the LinkedIn uh, example that they gave you, is looking for indicators. Here, a classic machine learning actually is the right method to do because you cannot process the raw bytes of a LinkedIn of a LinkedIn page, right? You do look for indicators. And, and what I show here are visible indicators, things that you can see from first sight without even digging into the code. We do that further analysis also, but even if you look here on these pages, for example, the uh, tab of the LinkedIn web page, uh, the uppercase I in the LinkedIn, is it an uppercase I or a lowercase L? How can you define, how can you identify it uh, with a, by a regular user, right? This is why we have the AI-based algorithm to identify it for us. And we do far more, far more than that. Dozens of indicators that are being collected for each one of, uh, of a page. Uh, and, and that helps the, the user to know whether the phishing or the page that he's browsing is uh, likely to be a phishing page or a legitimate one. Same goes for emails, right? So far it was a web page, these were, were about web pages. With emails, we, you can process the uh, HTML, of course, code within the email itself, looking for indicators within the HTML page. You can also use NLP, uh, another AI model to identify an extortion or a payment speech uh, or a payment uh, a method like pay me now uh, emails, even if the language itself by itself doesn't seem to be malicious, the combination or the context of the language can tell, uh, can tell you that this is not something you would like to get into your organization. And with branding impersonation, what our research team found that 90% of the phishing attack are being using 20 brands. Um, and, and if you focus on these 20 brands, you can cover most of the phishing attacks. And this is what we do. We compare uh, Fabicons and logos, uh, whether these are legitimate or not. Uh, and we do more other, th other things that I showed you with the LinkedIn example in order to prevent uh, branding impersonation and, uh, and other phishing uh, related uh, uh, tactics. Remember the part where the data is being exfiltrated and sent back to the uh, attacker infrastructure? Uh, there are two main techniques that you can cover here uh, using uh, an AI-based models. And uh, one technique is a DGA, what we call domain generation algorithm. I won't get into the details, but what it basically means that the domain name, uh, like for example, mail.google.com, uh, the domain name is Google. Uh, in this, exam, this uh, first technique, the domain is being generated in real time. So uh, the attacker can bypass any reputation services that flag that domain as malicious uh, in, in the past. So it's being generated in real time and then sent back uh, to the DNS uh, as a DNS query. And, and what we can do, what you can do here is of course train a model based on the billions of samples that we have in our threat intelligence cloud. And, and, and then you can likely or, or say whether this is likely to be a legitimate domain or a domain that has been uh, generated just now and is used for an, a non-legitimate uh, activity. Second technique called DNS tunneling where basically what the attackers are doing when they need to communicate back with their command and control center server, they encrypt the data within the subdomain. Again, going back to the mail.google.com, the mail uh, in, that, uh, in that domain line is the subdomain. And the attacker are using the subdomain to send information and, and get back results of what should be their next um, a security step or what should be their next steps within the environment. And the example I gave here in this slide of the subdomain was actually used in the solo wind attack. So you can use AI engines in order to determine whether both the domain and the subdomain are legitimate or not. All 
using AI, AI uh, methodology. Last but not least example is uh, how we make the professional uh, life of the admin easier and, and, and you know, focusing on the professional life. Uh, and, and what you can do here, remember these, uh, the mesh of solutions and, and the multiple events that potentially the admin will get on, on daily, uh, weekly basis. What you can do using an AI engine is to help the admin to aggregate events and also to prioritize them. Give an example of a malicious file that has been same file that has been uh, infected that was infect that infected hundred devices. Do you want to see hundred separate events, or you want to see one event telling you that there is one file that infected one hundred devices? There is a way to help the admin to aggregate th these events and only address the file and then later do the remediation all on all of the other devices. Same goes for the priority. What if okay the same file that has been found on one hundred different devices? is only an adware. It is a suspicious file. It's not really a high priority ransomware. So that event, which is already aggregated, needs to get its own score. And then according to its priority, shown on the dashboard of the uh, SOC team and any other who uh, deals with the uh, uh, security posture of the organization. And, and combining this, uh, of the aggregation and the prioritization using an AI-based model, we were able, and I give you two examples here, uh, of two customers were able in, in a customer in one customer environment to reduce the uh, the number of events in a factor of x10 and in the second customer environment reduce the number of events in a factor of x40 which is significant significant lower than what you used to have uh, without this ability and 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 just to summarize there are many security use cases uh, that can be covered using the power of AI. And, and what I brought here in this slide is uh, by using a, a Gartner model called the uh, adaptive security architecture, I just list down the use cases uh, uh, based on the um, phases of the model, predict, prevent, detect, and response. So I list down the use cases that can be covered using an AI-based solution. For example, detect unknown malware, a checkpoint. We do that using a deep learning framework. Uh, if you want to go to uh, preventing phishing pair emails and web pages, we do that both by deep learning and machine learning algorithms. But all of these use cases can be prevented uh, by using an AI-based algorithm. And a checkpoint, uh, we have uh, four pillars or four product pillars, uh, the quantum for the network, cloud for cloud security, harmony for access for uh, protecting users from act accessing uh, corporate assets, and Infinity Vision solutions for the SOC teams, all of them, as you can see, are, are uh, using AI-based uh, um, solutions in order to prevent zero days and, and further help the admin in his analysis uh, work. Last slide is, is what I would like to uh, use for uh, food for thought and, and ask you what, so, so given the entry points, if you look on the entry points, on a supply chain and, and uh, software, uh, software vulnerabilities. Uh, what it means uh, in, in terms of inside of uh, the latest sophisticated attacks where we know that, or when we saw that the supply chain or the entry points in the supply chain and the software vulnerability attacks have been, was compromised. What it means to uh, prevent an attack? How do you prevent it if the attacker is already inside the network? Uh, what prevention means? And to me, uh, well, with the 95% of the attacks uh, of what we call the spray and pray attacks, we prevent the entry points, a checkpoint. But for the rest of the 2 or 3% or 5% of the highly sophisticated, to me, prevention means to block it in its earliest stage possible. So even if you won't be able to prevent the entry point, we still focus on the game persistence stage and the lateral movement stage. And all, of course, as I told you, with the power of AI. So thank you very much. Thank you, Yaniv. We posted a poll when you started your talk. Let's take a look at how um, people are answering. Yes, and uh, on the question, my current security stack blocks cyber attacks using the following. Uh, the threat intelligence database is uh, the most... Mm -hmm. uh, choose from the audience and all of the above, of course, um, 
we have a few answering none of the above. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it, does this uh, result surprise you? Uh, can I see it again? I just... Uh, yes, we can read it again. Uh, okay. Have it on screen. Yes, it's, it's uh, 37 uh, answers on uh, Threat okay. intel, intel Intelligence Database. Most of them are using Threat Intelligence yes. Database. Yes, 40%. Yeah, so, uh, it, it doesn't surprise me um, much, I, I have to say, because the use of AI is still, uh, or the focus on using AI is still young, right? Uh, highly or advanced security products are, are introducing more and more AI-based solutions, but still the majority organizations of the organization are still uh, uh, dependent on reputation services, on uh, big data um, information. Uh, we do have it at Checkpoint, uh, again, called Threat Cloud, uh, sees billions of transactions on daily basis. Everything is being propagated in, in seconds and minutes. So it gives a pretty good solution. If you see uh, an unknown threat in Brazil, and in seconds, uh, minutes, mm -hmm. it has been, it is being uh, updated in Sweden or in, in the UK. So it gives you a pretty much good security solution. But what if the first unknown sample is seen in your environment and not in, an, in another, uh, in another environment? Yeah. How do you protect that? And for that, you need an AI-based solution. Geneve, we have to move on in the agenda, but I know that you will be able in the chat for questions afterwards. So thank you so much for joining us today here at IDG Security Day. Thank you as well. And, and great for, uh, thank you IDG for asking me and uh, have the rest, uh, have a great rest of the day.